how to make Here Comes the Sun hat. The hat is available in four different sizes and you can either make a bucket hat or a floppy sun hat. It's also available in a choice of four beautiful prints. It's fully reversible too. Making the pattern. First measure around your head following the instructions and then you can trace the pattern pieces. Once you've worked out what size you are, then you can trace the correct size. I would suggest tracing it and then you can use the pattern again to make a hat using your own fabric. You can see on the brim pattern, there are two lines, one for the bucket hat and one for the floppy sun hat, because the bucket hat just has a narrower brim. So I'll show you tracing out the brim pattern. So place your tracing paper on top. First, use a ruler to trace over the straight lines. You can make sure these are accurate then. So there's the fold line on one side and the edge of the hat on the other side. So just use a ruler. Now I'm going to trace the small pattern. So I'm going to trace along the small upper line. Just trace this slowly and carefully in pencil to make sure that it's accurate. And then choose whether you're going to make the bucket hat or the floppy hat. If you're making the bucket hat, you need the dash line. Remember, again, always trace around the size that you're choosing. These are shown in different colours on the pattern, so it's easy to see which is which. So just trace along that line. Once you've traced your pattern, mark the marking. So you need to mark the grain line. So just trace over that. And I've drawn an arrow to show the direction of the grain. And also mark the fold line. Then label your pattern. So I'm going to label it brim, small, bucket. Then if you want to use it again, you know what this pattern piece is for. Once you've done that, cut out your pattern. And then trace the body pattern again, following the size lines that you've chosen. And also trace the crown again, following the sizes that you've chosen. Once you've done that, there's all your pattern pieces labelled and they're ready to use for cutting out the fabric pieces. Make sure that they're all labelled so that you can use them again and you know which is which. Cutting out. There's enough fabric on the printed panel to make the floppy sun hat in the largest size. So if you're making smaller sizes, you'll have more than enough fabric that you need. Have a look at the panel, you can see all of the pieces are labelled with the label above them. So give the panel a press and then cut around the outer edge of all the pieces and pin the label that's above it to the fabric piece so you remember which is which. On your panel you'll also find some extra motifs and some gift tags that you could use for other makes. Now I've cut around all of the pieces around the outer lines so whichever pattern you're using, whether you're making the bucket or the floppy sun hat and whatever size, you will have enough fabric. But obviously, you now need to cut it to size accurately using your pattern pieces. So there's all the outer fabrics and the lining fabric pieces. But because your hat is reversible, it doesn't really matter which is the outer, which is the lining, as you can turn it round once it's made. But we've called them outer and lining so that you know which is which. So there's all the pieces that you'll need. So to start with, we're going to cut the crown outer. So the label is on the piece so that you know that that's the piece you need. Take the label off and keep it because you can pin it back onto the piece once you've cut it out. Now fold the crown outer in half with right sides facing down the centre. And fold that and you can finger press it to match the fold or you can press it with an iron. But make sure the raw edges are matching up. Now take the crown pattern piece that you cut out and place the fold line on the pattern piece so it's exactly level with the fold on the fabric. It's really important that it's exactly level so that you have an accurate piece. You also need to place it centrally. So if you're making the small hat like I have done, you've got a little bit of excess. Make sure it's central and then the pattern will be in the right place. It doesn't matter which print you've, you've chosen or you're buying, it's worked out so that the patterns are in the correct place. So pin it into place all the way around and then cut it out. Keep the label because you'll need to pin that back on once you've cut it out. And then you pin the label back to the piece. Now take the body outer and again take the label off and keep it so you can pin it back on. Fold it in half right sides facing and match up all the raw edges. So match up the short ends and the top and the bottom curved edges and finger press or press with an iron the fold Take the body pattern piece that you've made and place the fold line that you marked on the pattern 
onto the fold of the fabric. It doesn't matter about the grain line for this because obviously we've made the fabric so it's the grain is correct. But if you're using this pattern again for your own makes, then you can make sure that the grain line runs straight down the grain of the fabric. This means that if you've got any prints or patterns on your fabric, it will run in the right direction. So the fold line, the grain line helps with this. Now cut it out all the way around the edge and then repeat that exactly the same way with the other body outer piece so that you have two body outer pieces cut. And then with the brim, take the brim outer, again, take the label off while you're cutting, but keep it so that you can pin it back on later. Fold it in half right sides facing so all those raw edges match up. Press the fold then take your pattern piece and pin it on top so that the fold line on the pattern matches the fold of the fabric and making sure it's central. You can measure this or just judge it by eye. So you can see on all of these pieces that the grain line runs parallel to the fold. So make sure you follow this if you're using your own fabric later. But we've printed ours so that the pattern runs down the grain line. Obviously, there's a lot of more excess fabric on the brim because there's enough to make the floppy sun hat. Repeat that with the other brim outer piece so that you're cutting two pieces in total. Once you've cut the pieces out, they will look like this. And you can see I've pinned the label back onto them so that I remember which is the crown. I've got two body outers and I've also got two brim outers all labelled. Now use your pattern pieces to cut all the lining fabric pieces in exactly the same way. And then they will look like this. So there's the crown lining, the two body linings, and the two brim linings, which are absolutely identical to the outer pieces. So all your fabric pieces are cut out now and you're ready to start sewing your sun hat. Adding interfacing. Now you now need to decide how structured you want your hat to be. Use a medium weight iron-on interfacing. This is the easiest thing to use as you can press it into place and it's just about the right weight. You can use a more a heavier interfacing or lighter if you prefer but a medium works quite well. Now I've decided to just interface the brim of my hat. You can interface the body and the crown if you want your hat to be more structured. It's entirely up to you, but I just put it in the brim. You only need to attach it to the outer pieces, not the lining. So press it into place like I've already done here. If your, iron, if your interfacing isn't iron-on, you'll just have to tack it into place, but the fusible is the easiest. Once you've pressed it or tacked it into place, cut around the edge of the interfacing so that it's exactly level with the raw edge of the fabric. Because I'm using a medium weight, I can cut it the same size as the fabric as it doesn't matter that it goes into the seam allowance. If you decide to use a really heavy weight interfacing, it would be best to cut it a quarter of an inch smaller all round. There's all the two brim outer pieces with interfacing on and if you want to add it to the body and the crown, then do that at this stage. Joining the outer pieces. Take the two body outer pieces and place them right sides facing. Make sure they match up on all the raw edges, the sides and the top curves, and then pin them together along the two sides, making sure the raw edges match up. And then pin them together on the other two short sides. These two pieces are exactly the same size as you use the same pattern for cutting them out, so they will fit together nicely. Obviously on this I don't have any interfacing because I chose not to interface the body. But you can if you want a more structured hat. Now sew together down those two sides to make a loop. So you've got one continuous piece which forms the body of the hat. Open up the seam and press it open and flat. It's important to do this at this stage because you'll get a neater finish later. It's very difficult to press these seams flat once you've constructed the hat. So press those seams so they're open and flat. And that's the body outer complete. So it's a continuous ring. Now take the two brim outer pieces and place those right sides facing. So as you can see, these are the ones with the interfacing on. 
You don't even have to put interfacing on if you don't want to. You can leave the whole thing floppy. It's entirely up to you. So pin these together at the short sides and then at the other two short ends. And again, these are exactly the same size because you use the same pattern to cut them out. So they will fit together nicely. So pin them together at both short ends and then sew them together at both short ends too. Seam allowances are all in the instructions. Once that's done, open up the seam and press it flat. Just take care because obviously you've got in, if you've got interfacing on here that you don't catch the interfacing with your iron, you could put a cloth on top or turn it over to the right side to press it. But you need to be careful that your iron isn't too hot when you're putting it onto interfacing because it can melt it. So you could just open it with your fingers and then press it flat from the right side if you don't use a cloth. And then that is the brim outer as a continuous ring, which is wider at the bottom than the top and the body outer. Now your outer pieces are now joined together. You're ready for the next stage. Attaching the crown to the body. So take the crown outer and fold it in half with right sides facing so the fold runs centrally down the grain line. Finger press this at either end and then mark the top and the bottom of this fold on the wrong side with pins or an erasable pen. I often do both just in case the pins come out but the pins are easier to use as markers when you're pinning the crown to the body. Now fold it in half right sides again, but this time match up those two pins and then fold the, the creases on the bottom edges. Then open it out and again mark, the mat mark these two points with pins and a pen or both. And now you have marked the quarter points of the crown. Take the body outer and fold it in half with wrong sides facing like this, matching up the seams. Match the seam on the top and the bottom. Make sure they're lying exactly on top of each other. And then the folds on either edge, just finger press them to mark them. The seams are the two of the quarter points and these are the other two quarter points. You only have to mark two because the seams are already done for you. Now the same way as with the crown, those folds that you've just marked Place a pin at the top and the bottom of each one. The top one will be used for joining the crown into place and the bottom for the brim. So you may find it easier to mark the top and bottom with a pen as well because the bottom, particularly the bottom end of the fold, that pin may come out while you're sewing the crown into place. So you, Or you could just mark them in pencil, but do that within the seam allowance. So now you have marked and folded quarter points on the top and bottom of the body outer. So now we're going to attach the crown to the body, but you have to attach the crown to the top part of the body, not the bottom. The, cra the top is the narrower section. So then take the quarter points on the crown, the ones that run century down the grain line, and match that up with the fold line quarter points, not the seams. Depending on how your pattern runs, you want to have the seams on the side of your hat, not, not the front, and the grain line is the front. So match up the quarter points so you've got the seam matched up to one pin of the crown, and then one of the pinned quarter points, pin them together. So make sure the raw edges match up exactly, and then pin them together, and then you can remove the other pin. And do that all the way around. It's easier when you're attaching a circle to a straight or a curved edge if you match the quarter points first and then pin between. You get a more accurate finish and also it's just more even. Once you've done the quarter points, you can then pin between. So make sure you match up the raw edges and obviously you're matching up different levels of curves. The curve on the crown is a much sharper curve than the wider curve on the body. So pin it together in about three or four places just to make sure it fits nicely. And then you can then pin between these pins. Just move the fabric between your fingers to make sure that the raw edges match up. And pin between the pins. The more pins you put in, the more accurate it would be. Make sure you pin from the body side, not the crown side, as this is the side you'll be sewing. 
Now, if you have any problems at all fitting the curve round, make small snips, just a little less than quarter of an inch, into the body, not the crown, but the body. This will open up the curve of the body and will make it easier to fit round. It all depends on the weight of the fabric, whether you've put interfacing on and the size that you're making, how easy it is to get those curves to match. But if you find that you're struggling to make it fit, those little snips will just open it up. Repeat that all the way round between each of the quarter points until the crown is pinned all the way round the top of the body. And then it will look like this. So I've got lots of vertical pins all going all the way through. Now you can stitch the crown to the body, but make sure you have the body uppermost because that's the, the bigger piece. It's always best to have the flatter piece on the bottom. Once you've stitched it together, it will look like this. Make sure there are no creases or tucks. Then, working from the wrong side, press the seam towards the crown. This just makes it look more even and you also you'll get a neater finish if you do this. I always press it towards the crown because it's better to have more of the bulk lying on top of your head rather than down the sides. So just do this slowly, carefully, all the way around, making sure you don't press any creases in. Now, for an extra finishing touch, you can now top stitch just inside the crown. I do it about an eighth of an inch inside the crown, all the way around, making sure the seam allowance stays folded towards the crown. <clears throat> this keeps the seam allowance in place like this, but also adds a nice little extra detail. This is optional, but it does give it your hat a nice finishing touch. So now that's the crown attached to the body. Attaching the brim to the body. Take the brim outer and the same way as you did with the body, fold it in half, making sure those seams match up. These are two of the quarter points and then make a fold with your finger and the other side making sure the raw edges match up and place a pin at the top and the bottom of this fold. Again, you could mark this in pen or pencil and put pins in as well. You will need the pins because it does help with matching up if you've got pins, but you may want to mark it in pencil as well. And it's important that you mark the top and the bottom edges. The bottom edge will be used for joining the brim to the lining and the top pin will be used for joining the brim to the body. So once you've marked those pins, if you've caught the fold at all, just take it out and put it back in. Like I have here, just take it out, put it back in so you've got the fold and then you can mark that with pen or pencil. So there's the quarter points marked on the brim. Now take the body and you're going to pin that together along the bottom edge of the body and the inner edge, so the shorter curve of the brim. Make sure that they're right sides facing and start off by matching up the seams. So match the seam of the body to the top seam of the brim and pin together, making sure they match exactly. And then pin them together at the other two seams. Again, make sure they're right sides facing and make sure the raw edges match up and the seams lay exactly on top of each other. And then pin them together. Then pin together at the quarter points. So match the quarter point of the body with the quarter point of the brim. And then match the other quarter point of the body with the other quarter point of the brim. And your hat is now joined together in four places. This is exactly the same process and method that we did when we joined the body to the crown. Then pin together between each of those quarter points. Again, if you need to snip the brim so that it fits the body, then do so. When you're joining curves, always snip the larger piece to the wider curve to the neck because then that will open up to fit the narrower curve. And on this one, the brim is the wider curve. So now you can see I've pinned it all the way around. I didn't need to snip my seam allowances. It all fitted nicely. Now with the brim uppermost, sew the two pieces together, making sure you don't get any tucks or creases. And it will look like this. So I've pinned it together all the way around. Now this time, press the seam towards the brim. This is because it takes the bulk away from the body and also you'll be stitching this later. So very carefully, without moving any of the pins, because you'll need those marking pins in the bottom, press the seam towards the brim. Do that all the way round. You don't need to top stitch this because that will be done later. And now your hat outer is finished. So just put this to one side for now. 
making the lining. So take the two body lining pieces and place them right sides facing so the raw edges match up just like you did with the outer and pin together along one short edge. But with the other short edge, this is slightly different because we need to leave a turning gap in this. This is where you'll turn your hat right sides out. So take one of the pieces of fabric, fold it in half just to mark the centre or you can measure it. And then the turning gap needs to be two and a half inches. So if you measure one and a quarter of inches either side of this turning gap and mark it. I'm just using an erasable pen for this. Then place the short edges right sides facing. Make sure they match up and pin together. Pin either side of the turning gap, but also pin across the turning gap. It just helps to hold the th whole thing together when you're sewing it. And then sew together from the outer edge to the turning gap, leave the turning gap unstitched and then the other side, and then stitch down the other side. Make sure you reverse stitch either end of all of these seams to secure them. Then open it out and you need to press the seam open because the turning gap isn't too big. If you match up the raw edges and then press it open, the seams either side of the turning gap will hold it in place. This holds the turning gap to the inside, which makes sewing it up together easier if it's pressed at this stage. And then press the other seam allowance open and flat as well. Now take the two brim lining pieces. These don't have any interfacing on them. So if you've put interfacing on your hat, you won't have any on the lining. With mine, I've just got it on the brim, but you will only put interfacing on the outer. So this is easier to do. Pin it together with the short ends so that they match up. This is the same as you did with the brim outer. And then pin it together at the other two short ends. and then sew them together. Once you've done that, it will look like this. Turn it over and press those seams open and flat and this completes the brim lining. Now you sew the whole lining together in the same way as you did with the outer. So take the crown lining and mark the quarter points by folding it in half and then half again and take the body lining, match up the side seams so that you can fold the crease to make match the quarter points and don't forget to mark, mark them at the top and the bottom. Then pin the crown lining to the body lining, to the top edge of the body lining. Remember about the positioning. With this fabric, it's multi-directional. It doesn't really matter. But if you're using a fabric again with other makes and you want the pattern to run in the right direction, do remember that the seams go on the sides of the hat. So the pattern needs to run straight down so you match up the grain with the quarter point, not the seams. Exactly the same as you did with the outer. With most fabrics, it won't matter. But if you do have a direction your print wants to go in, remember the seams are on the side. So match up all the quarter points and pin together just like you did with the outer. Make sure the raw edges do match up when you match up these quarter points. And then pin together between the quarter points, snipping the seam allowance of the body lining if you need to, and then sew it together. And then the crown lining is attached to the body lining. Again, press the seam allowance towards the crown. And if you want to add that extra detail, then top stitch it into place, working from the crown lining side, from the right side. Because as this hat's reversible, if you want to put the top stitch, it's nice to have it on both the top, the lining and the outer. Now, pin and sew the brim lining to the bottom edge of the body lining in the same way as you did with the outer. Start by matching up the seams. So the seam of the body lining, pin that to the seam of the brim lining, making sure the seams sit exactly on top of each other and that the raw edges are matching. Pin it together at the seams and the quarter points.
all the way around, make sure the raw edges are matching, and then pin together between the quarter points, snipping the seam allowances of the brim lining if needs be. And then sew it together all the way around, and that's the lining of the hat finished. Again, press the seam allowance towards the brim. And there's the turning gap that you've left for using later. And your lining's finished. Joining the outer and lining. Take the outer hat that you've made and the lining hat you've made. You can take all the labels off because you won't need them anymore. And place them right sides facing and you're going to sew them together along the bottom edge of the brim. So match the seam on the outer to the seam on the lining on the bottom edge of the brim, making sure they're right sides facing and the raw edges are matching. Pin together at that seam, then pin at the quarter points. Now you match, marked these quarter points on the bottom of the brim earlier when you were ma matching them, marking them right at the beginning. So they'll still be there. If they're not, you'll have to remark them. So match, mark that quarter point and then match at the next seam making sure they're right sides facing. Roll them on top of each other so that the seams match exactly. You just get a need to finish that way. And then pin them together at the next quarter point. You'll just get a more even finish by pinning at all these quarters because it will fit then exactly together and the seams will be in the same place. Once you've done that, you can then pin between them. Now these Two pieces, the, t the brim lining and the outer lining are identical. So you're not having to match different size curves. So this is really easy and you won't need to snip in the seam allowances to make them fit because they're exactly the same size because you use the same pattern for cutting the outers and the lining. So pin them together all the way round. Between all of the quarter points. And when you've done that, sew it together all the way around so that you're joining the brim outer to the brim lining. And then once it's sewn together, it will look like this. Now we're going to snip these seams just because it will help the seams to lay flatter later. So just make the snips just up to the seam, but not into the seam. So a little less than a quarter of an inch long. And they can be about a quarter to half an inch apart. Snip it all the way around. And then once you've done that, to press the seam open, you can't press it flat just because of the way it's constructed. So fold the edge of the lining over and press it so that that seam is right on the edge. And that will help when you turn the hat right sides out to get this outer seam laying right on the edge if you do this at this stage. So do that all the way around. And then your hat, the outer hat, is now joined to the lining hat. Finishing off. Now you need to turn the hat right sides out through the turning gap. So if you put your fingers inside the turning gap and grab hold of the opposite edge of the hat, you can just push the whole thing through. It will turn out quite easily through the turning gap, but don't force it. You don't want to split the edges of this turning gap seam. So just push it through slowly and gently and it will all turn nicely right sides out. Now you want the seam that joined the two brims of the outer brim and the brim lining to lay right on the edge. So the easiest way I found to do this is to use a turning tool. I'm using this stick for my turning tools or something that's not too sharp and run that along the edge of the seam. By doing that, it does help to get the seam laying right on the edge. You don't have to do this. You can just roll it between your fingers. But I just find this little trick of running it along the seam does help. Now take your ironing board and place the hat flat on it and with the outer right sides up, just because that's the one with the interfacing if you've put it in, roll that seam between your fingers and press. Now work slowly and carefully all the way around. It's really important for a neat finish and to make your hat fully reversible so that you can't see the outer from the lining side and the lining from the outer side. That seam needs to lay right on the edge. So just roll it and press it. You could use a little bit of steam for this or just spray it lightly with water and then press. And now you can see that the seam is laying right on the edge all the way around. So it's really neat. So now there's a few things you need to do to finish off now. The turning gap needs stitching closed. So pin that together. Now I'm going to slip stitch it closed by hand because you want your hat to be fully reversible. This seam needs to be flat and invisible. If you top stitch it by machine, then you'll have a little ridge. So it is worth sewing it by hand. So use a matching thread in your needle 
and then secure the thread at one end of the seam by just pushing your needle through the fabric and into the seam. Leave a tail on the end, it just stops the thread from coming undone and then work two or three tiny stitches on top of each other just to secure and then slip stitch and this is done by working a stitch into the fold of the fabric on one side and then across to the fold of the fabric on the other side so that the all you will see between the seams are tiny vertical stitches. The long stitches go underneath the fold on both sides and the little vertical stitch goes across. And if you use a matching thread and work these stitches fairly close together, you can work them further apart one way just to secure it. And then you can work back along this seam to work in between. Or you can just work all small stitches to start with. It's entirely up to you. But try and keep these stitches nice and small so that you can't see them and keep them close together. Because then that will hold this turning gap closed and you won't be able to see it whichever way hat you're, where you're wearing. Also, make sure that you don't stitch into the outer fabric at all at this stage, only into the lining fabric. And once you've worked all the way along this, the turning gap and got to the other seam, work two or three tiny stitches on top of each other. This is just to secure the thread. And then snip off the end of the thread. And then if you've left a tail at the end like I did, just cut that off. And that's the turning gap closed. Any other loose threads that are coming out, sometimes you have the ends of the seams sticking out. Just trim those off. Now, it's worth pressing this flat at this stage. So there's a nice, the turning gap is nicely closed. So you won't be able to see that whichever way you're wearing your hat. Now, to add some detail, it's best to stitch the brim. You can just top stitch it just in from the edge a quarter of an inch, but I like to tip top stitch the whole brim. So it's important that the brim lining and the brim outer match up. So push a pin through the seam that joins the lining to the brim at the seams, as you can see here. Push it all the way through and make sure that the seam join matches and then place a horizontal pin across and you can remove that placement pin. Go round to the other seam that's joining the two brim piece and the two body pieces. Push a pin through from the lining side through to the outer side. Then you may need to adjust the outer exact a little bit to make sure that that pin goes directly through the two seams. Then place a pin through all of the fabrics to join and remove that placement pin. Now work around the, this seam in the same way all the way around until you've pinned it together. I've spaced all of my pins when I did it about an inch apart and this means that the seam that's joining the body outer to the brim outer and then the seam that's joining the brim line to the body line is exactly in the same place. Once you've done that then you can top stitch round the edge of the hat. I worked about a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the hat and then I worked further rings of stitching all spaced about a quarter of an inch apart. This gives the brim extra structure and gives it a really nice detail. What you can do is if you've got different colour fabrics for the outer and lining, use that a different colour thread in your bobbin, so the bobbin to match the lining and the top thread to match the outer. Now another little finishing touch, which is entirely optional but does give the hat a bit more structure, is to sew this seam, the seam that's joining the crown to the body together as well. I wouldn't do this by machine because it's very hard to get it exact it's easier to do it by hand. So secure the thread in the seam that's joining the crown to the body on the outer and then push your needle through to the seam on the lining. Then adjust the lining until the needle comes out exactly on the seam. So the idea behind these stitches is that they are worked inside the seam so you won't see them. Then work a long stitch just through the lining and then come out about an inch away the stitches don't need to be that close together in the seam itself. Then push your needle through the seam of the lining. That's the seam joining the crown to the body. And into the seam of the outer. Again, move the fabric slightly so it comes out exactly on the seam. Then make a tiny little stitch. I usually like to work a back stitch. It just makes it more secure. So a tiny little stitch backwards. And then make, again, another inch long seam just underneath the lining fabric. And then back into, all the way through and into the lining fabric. So you've got long stitches that go between these tiny stitches. So the only stitches on the outside are actually worked over the seam so you won't see them. Now you don't have to do this, but all it does is it joins the 
crowns together and just gives the hat a little bit more structure. But if you find this fiddly, just leave it out. Because you've stitched the brim together all the way around, the hats will be nicely secured, but this does give it a little extra finishing touch. Now you can see I've sewn it together all the way around. So your Here Comes the Sun hat is finished. Whether you've made a bucket hat or whether you've made a floppy sun hat, it's now ready to wear and you can choose which side you wear depending on your outfit, your mood or even the weather.